Hey friends, today I want to go over reverb. And I think that reverb is a pretty misunderstood thing. I mean, obviously it's taking a sound that you've made and putting it in space. I think a lot of people will look at the panels of reverb and they won't understand everything that's on here, all these different controls. Um, and all of them are useful for different reasons. Um, but I think that the main controls that I feel like are, are the most important settings on the reverb are often overlooked. So let's get into it and check it out. What I have here is this groove, check it out. So there's a synth line, there's drums, guitar, and bass. Let's go ahead and just focus on the, on the synth line. So I like the sound of the synth but I feel like it's a little metallic, a little dry, just it just doesn't have as much uh, uh, space and depth as I'd like it to have, so I added a reverb. Here's a reverb that I made. Oops. There's the reverb. There's without it. And there's with it. And you might be thinking, well, I don't really hear it. You're right, you don't really hear it. And why would that be? Well, let's take a look at what's going on here. This pad is all the way wide. It's super wide. Serum is a is a good example of a plugin that just f most of the presets on Serum and a lot of the sounds that you'll just end up designing off the cuff in Serum will be extremely wide, 100% wide. I think a lot of the manufacturers make these plugins. I mean, like um, every plugin will do this. Massive will do this. All kinds of plugins will do this with these big pads because they want you to be impressed. They want you to get your mind blown by when you when you uh, press the keys. Wow, what is this huge sound that I'm listening to? But this doesn't do much for you when you're working with space and reverb because. When you're in a room and you're listening to reverb, you look at the instrument. The instrument is sitting in the room, okay? Let's just say it's a snare drum and you smack the snare drum. The widest sound that the snare drum is going to make is it's hitting off the walls, okay? So in this case, when I turn this reverb on or off, there's some harmonics that it's adding and it's getting thicker, but I can barely tell that it's there, okay? So how can you solve this? Well, here's a reverb plugin and I would say one of the most important things that you're looking at is, is, is you're deciding what the reverb is going to do in terms of width, okay? Reverb, naturally, tends to be the widest thing that you hear in nature. So this pad, if I want to actually make this reverb more audible, I'll reduce the width of the pad. So let's just take, let's take it down to 50% width, okay? And here's it without the reverb. Now, first of all, I haven't really taken too much from the sound. Here's without it. With it. Okay. I was just A-B-ing it right there. Now watch what happens when I turn on the reverb. All of a sudden I can hear the reverb. Now the reverb, soloed, is kind of mid-rangey and, 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 and thick. It's got a lot of like nice, juicy, mid-range harmonics, okay? And when I A-B it, you can really tell the, scent, the, the depth that it's adding. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and make this a little bit even more audible, all right? I have the second part of this short pad, okay? And now you can really hear what's going on with the reverb. I'm gonna go ahead and play this, so without the reverb, I'm going to turn off this uh, utility plugin so we can hear the full width. I'm going to turn on the reverb. Now we can hear the tail of the reverb, right? You hear the tail. But when I turn on this utility plugin, something really amazing is going to happen, and you can use this to your advantage. Check it out. Now, do you hear that? How fantastic is that? What's happening is you have the sound kind of hitting in the middle, and then it almost sounds like it's like doing like a, it's like swimming. It's like, wow. It's like going from the inside to the outside, adding movement to your music, okay? I can exaggerate this by making the, uh, the, the panning of the big pad even, even thinner, so the width is now almost completely mono. Do you hear that? Here's without it. 
Here's with it. Okay, so you can add like an incredible amount of movement to your music that way. But that's, let's not stop there, because there, there, there's more to this. I'm going to go ahead and actually move over to the drums. I'm going to put this back at 50%. I'm going to move over to the drum track next, and let's just take a listen to this, okay? So here's the dry drums. Now, in this case, I want to talk about pre-delay, okay? So this is what the drum reverb sounds like. Now, obviously, this is a shorter tail. It's shorter. The uh, room size is smaller. Um, but I'm not too worried about that. You want to learn about that stuff, there's just so many tutorials out there. We're talking about uh, something that's even more effectual than that, okay? Right now, it sounds like my drums... The reverb is almost hitting at the exact same time as the drum hits, okay? So to me, it sounds like the drums are getting buried by the reverb, okay? I'll stop talking, just, just go ahead and listen. So that's what pre-delay is for, all right? Pre-delay, what it means is that it's delaying when the reverb is going to begin, when the, 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 the reflections of the reverb are going to hit, okay? So a lot of people will just kind of mess with this until it sounds good. And that, again, is not a bad policy, but there's a little bit more uh, science to it if you're working with uh, BPMs, okay? I actually learned from a friend at my, uh, at my workshops how to figure out the uh, millisecond uh, dividends of time by selecting areas of time in arrangement view. So check this out. I'm going to go over to arrangement view. I'm going to just select an area of time. And as you can see, it shows me the duration of the time that I've selected, okay? So let's zoom in on a bar, get it down to the 16th. So we're just gonna get, yeah, here we go. So now I can select just the 16th of that bar, and I can see that the duration of my selection is listed here at the bottom, okay? So if I wanna do an eighth count of length of duration, it's you can see it down here at the bottom. It says, I'll try to zoom in on this. It says 0 0.043. That means 43 milliseconds. So if you want to figure out the milliseconds of the pre-delay settings, you can just do this by selecting uh, different bits of audio. Okay. So if I want to do a 16th, that's 22 milliseconds. If I want to do a eighth, that's 43. If I want to do a fourth, that's 86 milliseconds. Okay. It's just listed right down there. So let's go back to this this drum verb. And now th the cool thing about this is that now I can set the pre-delay at a, at basically like you would set a normal delay at, at quarter or eighth or sixteenth um, pre-delay times. So let's just go ahead and listen to this without the pre-delay changed. And now let's go ahead and set it at, what did we say? It was to get a sixteenth, we need to do 43 milliseconds. Okay, so on this reverb, I'm going to bring this pre-delay up to 43 milliseconds. Might as well just type it in there, huh? And let's go ahead and listen to the difference. Now you might say, whoa, that sounds natural. That's because that's what it naturally sounds like when you're listening to something in space, okay? So here's the pre-delay right on top of the drums. Now this might have its own application and sound, but what you're having is you're having the harmonics of the reverb and the drums kind of fighting with each other, okay? When I redo this reverb, listen to how that just, it nails it. It's right there, okay? And that and what's happening is going, da 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 the drum hit, then the reverb, right? Um, so we can, you know, we can, we can multiply this. We can say, uh, we can say, uh, yeah, we can go down to 22 milliseconds. That's another uh, dividend in time, which is a 16th. So it sounds like this. A little bit closer to the drums. But to be honest, I think it sounds best at that 43 mark. Okay. So let's apply that idea back to the big pad. Right now, the big pad has no pre-delay, okay? When I listen to this uh, short pad part, right, this thing that's like... We got that kind of thing going on. Let's say I want to exaggerate that. Well, the way that I would do that is I would add pre-delay, okay? Let's add a big pre-delay. Let's do... So, four of these is 86 milliseconds. 
what I mean is a, a fourth of a bar is 83 milliseconds. All right, so I'm going to go in here to the synth reverb and make this 86 milliseconds. So now we have... And it's almost to the, degree, to the degree where the reverb isn't playing while the stabs are happening, those stab notes, right? But this will also sound good in the other formulation, too, of this riff, this just held out thing. Here's what it sounds like with the short pad. Here's what it sounds like with the held out pad. Now you can hear the harmonics now of, of the held out notes kind of coming from the center and out, okay? It's creating this awesome movement, right? So thus far, this is what we have. I'm just gonna go ahead and mute the, the other two tracks. Now I know that's really, really wet, but I'm doing this on purpose because some of you are gonna be listening with computers or whatever, or I, you know, I recommend listening with headphones or listening with a high quality device uh, for all my lessons. Um, let's go ahead and look at this guitar. So the guitar is the next thing. This is the guitar riff without reverb. Now, obviously that's dry and we're talking about reverb. I don't know, maybe I wouldn't normally put reverb on this guitar. I would put a very small amount, but since we're, we're dealing with reverb, let's go ahead and, and, and check out what we can do with this guitar. So normally when you open a, a, a reverb plugin in Ableton, the stereo setting is all the way open, okay? I've got some pre-delay set, um, you know, let's go to that, that 40, almost that 43 mark there, okay? And I've got some decay time set, and this is what the, the reverb sounds like for just the guitar. And uh, just, just a quick little aside, uh, there's these different quality uh, formulations on the, the reverb plugin. I choose Eco for guitar because it kind of sounds like a spring. You know, it sounds metallic, sounds cheap, kind of sounds like a, the, the sound of like a, a metal spring reverb, which is why I've done that. If you put it on high mode, listen. Sounds like a different kind of spring. It's pretty pretty interesting aside. So anyway, all the reverbs that you're going to listen to here are going to, to come with their width all the way open. And remember we were talking about width with the big pad. Well, let's think about this in the opposite way, okay? So if the width on the on the, the the reverb is all the way open, this is what's gonna happen. So here's without the reverb. I'm gonna turn the guitar up so we can hear it. So I'm gonna add the guitar reverb in there, okay? Here we go. Now I can hear the reverb, but to be honest, it sounds like a hot mess. Like there's a lot of reverb in the, the wide area. So in this situation, I actually am going to do the opposite. I'm going to make the reverb totally mono. I'm going to pull the stereo back in on itself and check out what happens now. So not, now we have a situation where the guitar reverb is right down the center and the drum reverb is a little bit wider and that super wide pad reverb is all the way out there. So we have a fan of three different places in stereo where the reverb is occupying space, okay? And that makes it that makes it audible, okay? So I'm gonna go back and forth between the stereo width being up on the guitar, which is now. Now I can hear the reverb, I, I know I can hear it, but it still sounds like a mess to me. When I pull this down, feels like everything cleans up, super clean. So if you've ever had an instrument you've wanted to add depth or reverb to and you're just like, man, this is just like not working. I don't know. It's making things too busy. Try to turn the stereo width all the way down. Okay. So then in this last situation, this is just going to kind of be for fun, a little trick that you can do. Um, maybe you've listened to Tame Impala is a good example. Um, the rock albums, the bass guitar uh, has width to it. And you're like, how the hell did they do that? Well, one way that you can add stereo width to bass is by adding very, very short reverb. Check this out. So here's what the bass sounds like. I'm going to turn it up again so you can hear it. So this is a totally mono bass, okay? But what I did is I added this reverb. Check this out. And it's adding that nice width to it. You hear that? Without it. With it. 
So let's just go ahead and look at the settings. What I've got going on is I've got a little bit of pre-delay, which is going to... Now, now uh, that's going to introduce what's known as the Haas effect, um, and you're going to have the bass hit, and then the, the reverb is going to hit a little bit later, and that's going to cause a little bit of separation, right? So... Um, what I've got is the de decay time really low, as, as low as it'll go. I've got the stereo width as high as it'll go. And what I've done is I've cut some of the low end out, so now you just get those nice harmonics from the bass, and this is what you get. And, you know, the more you open the pre-delay, the easier it's going to be able to hear, it's going to be to hear that uh, stereo width that it's adding. But you got to be careful with bass. I mean, bass, uh, if it's doing like a tight part, dit, 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 you have too much pre-delay, it might get sloppy. But what this is doing, this is a long held out note part, and so the bass is benefiting from that reverb, okay? So, that's all the reverbs. Let's go ahead and do this, my classic... I'm going to map the uh, Q button to A, B, C, and D, and we're just going to listen to the difference that these reverbs have made. So here's without them. Do a little mixing and pull this bass back where it belongs. Okay, so here's the reverbs. Without them. And with them. Now, I know that's extreme. It's very extreme. Um, but I'm just doing that so that you can really hear the difference. All, all those reverbs are not stepping on each other's toes, and that's kind of the, that's kind of the point, you know? Um, all right, so... I hope that this is useful to you. Pre-delay, super important. If you're working with BPMs, especially most people working in Ableton Live, lots of, lots of your sessions will be with BPMs. Uh, figure out the milliseconds and work with that on your pre-delay. Uh, stereo width of reverb can be different depending upon each instrument. Um, if an instrument is super wide, just dial that reverb back or dial that width a little bit back and let the reverb be the wide thing so that it sounds natural to your ears. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. Thank you for watching.